Hey, what's up everybody? Hope you're all doing well. I uh, just want to come on and show some albums I have. Um, yeah, got some stuff piling up, so... Got some stuff piling up, figured I'd come on and show it. Um, yeah, trying to make videos a little closer together, not as uh, spaced out, I guess. I don't know. Hmm. If you hear it in the background, Kashmir Stage Band, uh, Expo 75, Concert Tour Japan, Okinawa. Very nice funk. Uh, this is from, um, obviously recorded in 75, but when they were touring Japan, I guess bands used to do like concert, like kind of concert hall expos or whatever. I don't know, for my time. Anyway, really cool. Um, probably they're easiest to find for sure, and maybe my least favorite from them. Because all their albums are so good, but um, this is really, really good regardless. Even though it's my least favorite, it's still great. It's still Casimir Stage Band. If you don't know Casimir Stage Band, a funk band from um, Texas. Wow, just forgot the name. <laughs> from Texas. Um, yeah, conducted and directed by Conrad Johnson. He was like the most probably well-known name there, but... Showing that cover pretty plain. They're all damn hard to find, so I was happy to get this. Where's the lineup? The lineup is somewhere on here. I think right there. Uh, anyway, check out some Casimir Stage Band if you don't know it. Very funky, cool Texas funk. I love it. Um, yeah, if anyone has any others that they want to sell slash maybe trade for other stuff, I don't know. But this is great if you like funk. Get on it. I think all their stuff's online too. All right, so into the actual stuff I had. So I kind of lost my mind and picked up some non-jazz stuff. I know, I know, calm down. Don't call anyone just yet. Just um, hold off. First up, some Boston Psych, Ill Winged Flashes. I found this locally in a buy. I was buying a bunch of other records to resell. Found this, um, it's cool. Not really the type of stuff I go for, more than like the UK, kind of Canterbury prog, I guess, psych, uh, and uh, I don't know, not really kind of stuff, but still pretty good though. Boston, kind of inspired by uh, West Coast psych folk, Americana, but it's they're from Boston. Uh, nice female vocals. It has some male vocals too, but the female vocals are kind of the standout, even though they're not great. They're still, they fit in very well with the music. Nice songwriting, nice jams. Um, I don't know too much about this, so. You guys might know more than me, you psych dudes. Pretty cool album, though. Figure I hang on to it for a little while, check it out. I like it so far. It's on the ABC label, I believe. Yep, it's on the ABC label. But bam. Ill Wind, Flashes. Um, very cool. Boston Psych. Next up, I do have a jazz record. Um, this is Randy. Uh, so, Randy Hughes. And Langston, er, Randy Weston and Langston Hughes. There we go. I knew I would get it one of these days. Um, really cool. Uhuru Africa, 1961 from uh, Andrew Lit, I believe. Very interesting sort of recording project. So this was, um, yeah, recorded in 59, 60, released in 1960. Lyrics and uh, the liner notes are by Langston Hughes. He kind of like top narrates on this record. Um, yeah, so basically like a four-part suite played by a 22-piece orchestra, which I'm not like usually the biggest fan of, but the orchestra on this has people like uh, Clark Terry, Freddie Hubbard, Slide Hampton, Louis, uh, Julius Watkins, uh, Gigi Grice, y Youssef Latif, Sahib uh, Shihab, Cecile Payne, Cecile Payne, Kenny Burrell, Max Roach, so Baba Tunde is on this, a bunch of heavy hitters, really, really good um, African jazz stuff, and um, this was actually banned in uh, in South Africa, which is pretty uh, pretty crazy. I think kind of the same time that uh, Max Roach's Freedom Suite was also banned, like the same order, so kind of crazy, but very very good. I guess it was made by uh, Randy Weston because you know, his dad, I guess, was really um, Afrocentric. Really taught him a lot about Africa and African culture and awareness. Uh, cultural awareness and um, 
I guess he said people were kind of afraid to deal and talk about Africa. People were afraid to speak about it. And after he made this, he got called a black nationalist and all this bullshit. Kind of similar to a little bit kind of what's going on now, but not really. Anyway, fantastic. Um, yeah, very, very cool. African Jazz, Randy Weston, and a whole slew of other heavy hitters. Pretty sure this is online to check out. Um, Uhuru Africa, Randy Weston from 1961 on Roulette. I'm not sure label, it's just a Roulette label, but interesting recording. By the way, I changed the frame rate on my uh, on my phone here, so let me know if you can notice a difference in the video. Next up, another non-jazz record. I know, I know, just hold on, hold on. Lee Hazelwood, Love and Other Crimes. Um, this is one I have for sale. I just pulled it out, just to check it out, listen to it. Another sort of group by. Not really usually my thing, kind of like a country pop record, I guess. Oh, it's like a mix of like country, pop, jazz, maybe like a little bit of lounge music. Um, he's not like the best vocalist, I guess, but he's a great songwriter, great, um, yeah, great, great arranger. I really enjoyed this. Uh, beautiful versions of the Dead's Morning Dew on here. Uh, fantastic um, yeah it's cool it's cool I like him as a songwriter you know and he's still a good singer definitely kind of reminiscent of like I don't know I don't know what maybe Johnny Cash ish maybe I'm probably wrong but I don't know what he sounds like not really my uh, my genre but he produced this whole thing really cool Lee Hazelwood um, I've always seen his name around this is love and other crimes it's called from 1968 it's got some good tracks on here for sure and of course, that fabulous stash. Look at that caterpillar thing is fantastic. But I like it. I'm reprise, 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 reprise. Might hang on to it. Might end up selling it. Don't know. Just wanted to show some stuff that wasn't uh, jazz. Oh, this wasn't supposed to be in here. This is just something I was listening to. Extra copy, but always cool. Les McCann. Invitation to open this. I've seen people post this in the, I think on Instagram uh, a few weeks back, so I pulled out this copy, which I had. Um, yeah, it's still fantastic. I still love it. If you don't know this record, highly, highly recommend this on Atlantic from 1972. Um, it's basically like a 26 minute continuous mix, continuous track of like expressive uh, improvisation, I guess, freeform sort of soul and hypnotic groups. Very, very cool, very relaxing. Uh, for me, personally, excellent soloing by Youssef Latif. Um, yeah, very, very cool. Um, David Spinoza, Alphonse Muzon, I think Bernard, yeah, Bernard Purdy does a percussion. Um, yeah, completely improvised. Um, and then, of course, uh, McCann, Les McCann on keys and synths, so. There's like a total of like 13 players on here. I'll already show the inside, but fantastic. I wasn't gonna show this. It just I just had it, so the same pile for whatever reason. It's great. If you don't know that one, check it out. It's not expensive. Next up, this is a cool record. One that's usually pretty cheap. I just didn't have it. Steve Kuhn, Trance, um, his second album for uh, ECM. Yeah, I think it's yeah, second album for ECM. Recorded only 10 days after his uh, his first ECM record, which is pretty pretty amazing. I think his first one is called Ecstasy. So as you can imagine, it's like acoustic, electric, panel-driven, modal, post-bop, fusion, ECM-type jazz, sort of. I know ECM, when you say that, kind of gets a bad rap sometimes, but I like some ECM stuff. Not everything. I kind of grow more away from it. Um in my latter year latter years but still fantastic and also i love his style on the back that coat is freaking amazing but really really cool moto post bob ecm type stuff steve coon another one that's probably 10 bucks under 10 bucks check it out i can show the label because it's just ecm which i kind of think is a lame label uh just look at the label not the label itself but this is a fantastic record the one i just never had harry beckett Harry Beckett's Joy Unlimited Memories of Bacares. Bacares. I never know how to pronounce that. Memories, uh, 1975 on the Old Gun label. 
excellent UK jazz fusion, um, African jazz, just damn good. I do like the Oven label though, really cool. There's the lineup, club bam, sorry about the glare. Um, yeah, very cool, like I said, this one I never had, but this is classic UK jazz, in my opinion, classic Harry Beckett. So just go listen to it, I'm not gonna even talk about that one. Go listen to it, if you don't like it, then we can't be friends. I'm just kidding, but still, it's fantastic. Uh, next up, a crazy free jazz record from Sweden. Swedish free jazz, avant-garde jazz. Um, gets pretty out there, for sure. Um, AJ or EJ Thalen, Acoustic Space, 1970 on Odeon, the Odeon label. Love his cover. Pretty kind of simple concept, but really cool. Uh, yeah. There's the players on here walking. Kuhn, uh, Adelhard, Reuter, Reutinger on bass, who I'm not really familiar with, and John O'Prane on drums. Recorded in 1970 in Stockholm. Very good, very out there, sort of. If you know his playing, then you know it's going to be pretty out there. But I enjoy it. I like Avant Garde Jazz, so check it out. And the whole thing is on Spotify or on YouTube. I don't spend too long on these, just kind of wanted to come in and show some stuff just so I don't have stuff piling up. Uh, show a couple more. Pick this up recently in another kind of group. I picked up a bunch of stuff for sale. England? Garden Shed, wasn't familiar with this, like a uh, UK prog kind of in the vein of, uh, actually not kind of, very much in the vein of like Genesis, yes, or symphonic rock, which isn't really my style of prog, but it was still a cool listen, just enjoyed the music, um, interesting cover, very excellent condition, um, unfortunately vinyl has some scratches, but still, uh, still cool to find for, you know, a few bucks, Arista. Yeah, a group I never heard of. I guess I only had this one record, and then that was it. But like I said, very reminiscent of like Genesis. Yeah, so if you like that stuff, you'll probably like this. Um, that's some fun kind of prog, and a similar style vocal too of like Genesis and Yes. So um, yeah, this is for sale, trade whatever. Somebody wants it, hit me up. It does have some scratches on both sides, and it has like a few clicks. So probably like a VG because it has some clicks here and there, not throughout, just like here and there. Some background noise. And uh, last record here, this is one I kind of really wanted to show because other than jazz um, and hip hop, I'm not really into too much, just like some psych here and there, but the only like punk group I really like is the Misfits. And I always have, obviously, if you know the Misfits, you know their stuff is super hard to find. So I was happy to find this original, um, or I guess not an original original, but like a whatever, early 80s pressing um, with their second record, Earth AD. Uh, or I think it's Earth AD, Wolf's Blood is like the full name, but Earth AD, whatever. Um, definitely a bit heavier, faster compared to their first uh, Walk Among Us, which I really want to find. Um, this one isn't really like my favorite from their catalog. Definitely like third or fourth, probably third. It's not like Walk Among Us, I like Static Age, that comp a lot more. So I definitely rather trade this for like a Walk Among Us or if anyone's interested, let me know, this one's for sale. It's on plan nine. Really clean. The uh, obviously the sleeve is still in the shrink. The price tag was nine bucks, eight ninety eight at Record Breaker. I don't know what Record Breaker is, but maybe somewhere in Mass or something, or where it was. But yeah, on the Plan Nine label, obviously with uh, Danzig. Very cool. Um, yeah, I'm a big Misfits fan. Like I said, I love almost. All of their stuff, this isn't one of my favorite records from them. I'm more of a fan of Blanc Among Us, uh, Static Age. Those two are like the ones that I really like to find um, originals of. But I said, very, very cool. Still, anything Misfits do is cool. I even like their stuff with uh, Michael Graves. That stuff was really good um, to me. Uh, Dig Upper Bones was a jam. I don't know. I like all their stuff. Great group great uh, songwriting. I'm a big fan of horror movies, so if you know the Misfits, that probably explains it. They uh, have a lot of horror themes. That's kind of all they do, so I um, haven't heard their uh, later records, but and heard most of their records, and they're all pretty much like that, so that's why I love them. 
Um, yeah, my favorite punk band, probably the only punk band I really listen to regularly. So, if anyone's interested, you want to trade or whatever. This is the um, Ghoul Hair Error Error version. It has the wrong hair on that dude there. Whatever. If you know, they have like 15 different pressings for each record. So, very cool. But I just wanted to come on, say what's up, show some records, some non jazz records for a change, see how that works. If anyone's interested or not let me know i think my phone has been crooked this whole time but whatever thank you for watching hope you guys are safe having a good april almost may getting to be summer for us u.s guys so definitely going to be enjoying that all right take care talk to you guys soon peace